Obviously, we're quizzing you out of the book. We want to make sure that you understand, you know, we want to make sure that you've read the book, basically, and that you understand what's going on. But it could be any number of those things. Every once in a while, somebody's going to say something just a little bit different. I told you that yesterday, right? There'll be a little bit of inconsistency, and uh, it's best if you find an inconsistency, let me know we'll talk about it. So, just to clarify today, that's an ace Julian's two inches long. Okay? Uh, your Python, as long as it's an eighth of an inch thin, right? The square round doesn't matter so much. It could be circle, it could be a triangle, it could be whatever shape. The idea is that it's a country style cut, so we're going to find this in like soups. We're going to find like uh, chicken noodle soup, you know, maybe, the, maybe a vegetable soup, something like that, maybe strong. Okay? So, um, that one's kind of tricky, right? That handout up there is the best one for you right now. If you're gonna, if we're gonna talk about quizzes or we're gonna talk about um, what we want for our midterm one. So let's get right into it. Yesterday we talked about different kinds of knives. This is a This is a nice and sharp, right? So what about this one looks different than yours, what is it? Bread knife. It's a bread knife. A bone bone? Not quite. No. Damn. Here. Oh, it's flexible, okay? So it's, it's not a, it's not, it's just a utility knife. So I just said, that was just a trick. Um, <laughs> this one right here, you might not have seen before. This is a carving knife, right? It's for like melon carving and all that stuff, right? Keep it real sharp. It's, it's not made out of the same kind of steel like your guys' high carbon steel blades. It's made out of just uh, like a regular uh, carbon content blade, and so they rust really fast. Sushi knives are the same way. So if you go buy like a standard sushi knife, you gotta take really, really good care of them because they start to rust right away. Um, what kind of knife is this? It is a knife. It's a pallet knife. A pallet knife. Okay? You guys call it a spatula, but the name is, is it's called a pallet knife. Okay? So if anybody says, where's the pallet knife? It's not the one with a sharp blade, right? And then also, hopefully everybody went out and got some of these guys. Okay? We're going to need those next week. You guys are going to be making soft. Right? So we need soft spoons. So find a way. Whether somebody's going to go buy them for everybody, you guys can pay them back, or you're going to go down to the student store and buy some. I know they got a lot. I told me you guys are going to mob them. So if you don't mob them, I'm going to look like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'll put these right Okay. Very important, I want to reiterate this, right? When we're cutting vegetables, we're cutting anything. Once our knives are out, always know where that blade is in that knife. Okay? It's always your responsibility, and everybody's responsibility to make sure that you're staying away from that blade and that your partners know exactly where walking, we have our knife down to our side, we're letting people know that we have a knife, a knife line, or sharp, right? Just like if it's hot, it's a hot line, right? Let them know what's going on. Make sure that it's always somewhere safe. So if it's not tucked up underneath your cutting board, it's on a sheet pan in the right spot, or it's in your knife, or it's in your hand. Never anywhere where it can fall down, right, or somebody can knock it off. Positive control over cutting. Now, we'll go with the carrying knife first and do an onion. Okay. You guys wash them off for me already? Yes, chef. Sure. When we hold our paring knife, it's a little bit different than the grip for our chest knife. We're going to hold it just like this and curl our fingers around. Right? Thumb right here. I showed you guys this yesterday. As long as you don't move your thumb up and down on it, you won't cut yourself. Okay? As long as it's right up against there and it's not moving. Okay? So that's the grip cut towards ourselves. It's the only time that you'll cut towards yourself. So, remember, I'm going to take this little bottom piece off, okay? And that's going to go into the trash. And I don't like this onion skin. It looks a little mushy. So, it's all going to be trash. We're just going to peel up underneath into our trash can. This is the cleanest way to cut an onion. And I promise if you, if you go cut your onion this way in your other classes, the chef will be real impressed. Okay? And your friends and family will be impressed if you don't smell like onions over it won't get up underneath your fingernails. To me, that's that's the best part. I didn't learn this until I had been cooking for like seven or eight years. I would go home at the end of a shift as a line cook, smelling like straight up garlic and straight up onions. But if you do the same technique with the garlic, it's not great. So we got any bad spots, we'll go ahead and take this off. But perfectly peeled on the Take this other little tip off. 
then our onion's pressed and ready to go. You can even leave it on your mise en place tray. You can peel all your stuff all at once if you want to. That way you can throw out your trash and everything's really nice and clean in front of you. It's fine with me. I don't care how you do it. Right. How's that pot going over there? Boiling? Simmering. Simmering? Um, we have more ice in here. Talk about the carrot, right? I'm gonna borrow somebody's peeler. Alright. Right. Right. So remember, we're gonna use both sides of the peeler. Nice and quick, right? We're not gonna sit here all day. Right? Both sides of the peeler. Again, when you go to your first job, maybe your first job is a prep cook. If you go in there and peel like this, they're gonna tear you up. Right? You gotta get stuff done fast. Chef be in front of the front, okay? And then you can take the rest of the stuff, you know, make sure it goes into the trash bin. We got a carrot to work on, I think I'm gonna get another one. Can you do that with cucumbers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you got a regular standard cucumber, you wanna peel that thing before you get it, it's got real thick skin. And these have all been washed my wonderful class sous chef and steward. I give them the credit, I don't know if I actually want But our class steward has been doing wonderful jobs. He's been doing a great job, right? You notice how everything's nice and clean. When you guys walked around and started cleaning stuff, you know, you start to see where things can kind of get away from us. Hi. Hi. Can you steal some chicken stock? Sure. You need chicken stock? Yes. Take the stuff that I uh, just strained. It's hot. Stuff I just drank, then I don't have to put it away. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so there's that. This is Chef Magoni, everybody. Hi, Hi. everyone. Hi, Chef. Oh. Hey, Hi, Chef. Where's the flat? How are you doing, Chef? Right. Yeah. We'll start off with the onion. Let me show you guys how to dice an onion, okay? I'll show you how to slice and dice it. There's a couple of different things. So, there's a little root on the end, okay? We're gonna cut down straight through that root. We're not gonna cut it, so like if this was the Earth, North and South Pole, right, equator. Don't cut it through the equator, okay? Inevitably, somebody will cut it like that. So please don't. Through the North and South Pole. Every time I say it, it doesn't matter, right? So, we have a half of an onion, so we're gonna slice this onion, we're gonna take out this little core, just like that, okay? We wanna waste as little as possible. But, this can go in the stock pot, so it's good to go. Now, now when we cut it, when we're going to slice an onion, we're going to go through the uh, north and south pole again. There's another cut that might get you confused. It's called emince. Have you guys seen that? Yes, sir. Emince, right with the E in the front. Uh, this one, we're going to go down the other way, right? And it's in the of the deep way. So, we're going to emince. Our bear claw, curl up our fingers, keep our thumb tucked in, right? Holding it with a pinch grip like I showed you guys yesterday. Always try to get right up next to the edge of the cutting board. It makes it easier on you. And then we use a rocking motion. Okay. As soon as you cut through it, you can stop rocking, right? I see a lot of people that are like, right? It's really inefficient to make your arm tired really fast. So keep the tip of your knife down, right? And if we're at mince, then we're trying to get real thin little like half rings. Okay? That's what we're looking for there. You're, that's not going to be on your fun. That's just a, that's a bonus. Same thing with slicing an onion. So if we're going to slice the onion, we're going to go the other way. Just like this. With a rocking motion. Right? Notice I've, I've bent over the cutting board. This is why you see a lot of us like we have a pretty bad lunch. Okay? So like you spent a lot of days right over the top of your, your product that you're cutting, right? Because I want to look down the spine of my knife and all I want to see is the spine of my knife. I don't want to see one side of the knife or the other. If I see one side or the other, that means I'm not cutting straight, okay? So I stay right over the top of it. I got my good bear claw going on, okay? And then I use a rocking motion and I cut slices off. And I'm keeping the tip of my knife down on the table. I'm not raising the knife up past my knuckle because then I'm just going to shave off some stuff. Okay. And it's not, I know you see it on TV, it's not this, 
hey, this will ruin your night, right? And you gotta sharpen it every day. It looks cool and everything. It, you know, if you do it in front of friends, right, it'll press and stuff. But that's not the proper way to do it, right? It's rocking motion. Okay? Because then now I'm gonna have to, I, now that I did that, I'm gonna have to go sharpen my knife. Right? Your knife will last a lot longer. So this is a sliced onion, right? And then when we take it apart, we should have nice little, about maybe eighth of an inch slices. I mean, that's the standard if I tell you to go slice an onion. Okay? We're gonna make, hopefully, we're gonna make French onion soup. Um, this is what you, you can use either one of those. What is that cut called, Chef? Slice. This is a slice. Huh? Or, or if we're going to julienne an onion, that's how we would julienne an onion. Okay? This onion's round, right? It's got all those little layers. So if we said julienne onion, just like this. Is that fine or regular? Uh, regular. Okay? This, immense. And we try to get that as thin as we possibly can. Okay? Now, we move on to dice. So what I want you guys to work on today first is I want you to dice an onion. I do not care if it's a small dice, a medium dice, a large dice of the onion. Don't do a large, you know, because then you have not a lot of onions, right? Um, but we want to get cubes. I'll show you how to get cubes, right? We want to, this is called the bagel cut. Just like we cut the bagel, okay? We're going to have the knife horizontal to the deck, to the cutting board. You can have your hand horizontal to the deck and the cutting board. You don't want to get your fingers in the way of this thing, right? Or they'll be gone. I'm gonna keep saying that until you guys stop cutting this stuff. <laughs> now, I'm gonna go in about, I'm gonna make a small dice, so I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch. Make like a plank. And I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna press down too hard, because that's gonna put pressure on the knife, it's gonna make it a lot harder. I'm just holding it enough so that it's not sliding around on my cutting board. If I push down real hard, the knife's not going anywhere, I'm yanking too hard, and then I slice through my hand, okay? So real gentle. I'm going to go about 90% of the way through. We left that core on so that it will stick together. Now, same thing, about a quarter of an inch. We try the best that we can to keep that knife blade nice and straight and horizontal. That's going to be the toughest part for you. Okay. And we keep that hand out of the way. So once we have a quarter of an inch, turn it. We're going to make little sticks 90% of the way through, not all the way through. This is holding it together right now. Okay? So, Take the tip of my knife down. Okay. It's easiest to push the tip of your knife in than to try to push it down, right? Okay. As long as I'm keeping my thumb out of the way, we're good to go. Okay. I got a couple of pieces over here that got away. I'm going to save those for later. Then what I want is I want to cut off of here and I want to do my best to keep them in like a cube shape. Okay? If I get a couple that get away and they're not a cube, I save them for later. I only want the cubes. We're dicing, right? And they're not going to be perfect. But what we're looking for in these onions is a uniformity, right? We won't be able to get that very end at first, right? And that's okay. You don't have to, later on we'll worry about yield. That's the last thing we'll worry about. It's going to be the most yield we can. Today I want you guys to focus on the shape. Okay? So, you can see here, uniform shape, right? Little squares, little cubes. Not uniform shape, not little cubes, okay? There's a couple of things we can do with that. You know, we can go back through, trim it up, make it perfect, right? If we're focusing on yield. But really, I just want to make sure that you guys understand and you look at the shape of it. Okay? If these aren't going to turn into, because they look like little triangles, they're not going to turn into cubes, put them in the usable scrap, use them for something else. Okay? What I want is a nice, small dice of an onion. Okay? Or a medium dice of an onion. As long as it's a cube. The next thing that I want you to do is take your carrot. Let's take this right here. What's nice is when you have like a... Do you guys have a bench scraper in your toolkit? You know what I'm talking about? Baking does. pastry probably does. Pastry does. Well, why don't you guys, when we break from here, you guys pull it out and donate it to the group for the day and share. Bench scraper works really great to transfer over here to tomorrow. Okay. So we got a small dice of an onion. 